Welcome to Conversational Christianity. My name is Mark Owens and I'm here to be your guide into the world of Jesus of Nazareth and his essential teachings. Now, the first thing Jesus came teaching, in fact, his essential message is that the kingdom of God is at hand. To the common first century Palestinian Jew, that was an incredible idea. Because what Jesus is teaching is that God himself is within reach. He's right there for everyone, not just for the spiritual and religious elite. And he's also teaching that finding God, walking with God, is not so much about being able to keep all the rules, to adhere to the religious rites and the law that they've been taught all their lives, but instead it's about intentionally leaving the world behind and entering into this brand new way. If we're going to understand Jesus, we absolutely have to understand this core doctrine that the kingdom of God is available. It's within our reach. It's there for everyone. And if we desire to experience God in this radical, new, personal way, all we have to do is follow Him. Now, in the New Testament book of Matthew, we find what's commonly called the Sermon on the Mount. And in it, Jesus makes his great declaration of separation. In other words, he introduces us and his listeners to this way of the kingdom. He opens the sermon with what are called the Beatitudes. And in them, we're introduced to this concept of kingdom reversal. That is, that in the kingdom of God, everything tends to run exactly opposite to the way of the world. It's really the window that Jesus opens up for us to look through to understand everything that he has to say. He begins the sermon by saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's a good question, isn't it? Who are the poor in spirit? And why are they blessed? Well, I believe we have to listen to the words Jesus says with the ear of the original listener. These are common everyday people. They're fishermen and farmers. They're merchants and employees, wives, children, people just like you and me. And they've been taught all of their lives that the only way to see God was to keep the law perfectly, to make all of the appropriate sacrifices at the appropriate times, and of course to give the right amount of money to the religious temple and the synagogue. They're also taught that poverty is a curse from God. And so the fisherman who's out there working six days a week from sunrise to sunset to just squeak out some kind of living for him and his family really has been taught all of his life that God is mad at him for some reason. I mean, he's convinced that either he did something wrong, or his father did something wrong, or his grandfather did something wrong. I mean, somewhere along the line, somebody has made God mad, and there's absolutely nothing that he can do for it. The poor in spirit feel alienated from God by their social position and by their inability to keep all the rules in all the right way. Not only that, the Pharisees have always taught them that they were cursed by God, and they're far removed from Him. Well, Jesus comes along and He says, no, that's not the way it is at all. Jesus says that until we begin to understand our own condition and our spiritual need, we can't begin to experience and understand the love of the Father. In fact, He says, until we get hold of our own spiritual poverty, we can't enter into the way of the kingdom. And so you see, the fisherman who knows he doesn't deserve God is actually blessed because he's able to respond to this invitation from the ruler of heaven to follow a new path. It's his failure to keep the rules, his inability to keep up with the letter of the law that prepares him to embrace the way. As long as we're striving to enter the kingdom by our own strength, as long as we're trying to do it our way, we're actually far away from God. And so the reality of the situation is exactly reversed from what we've been taught all our lives. That's the kingdom reversal principle revealed for us. Now in the sermon, Jesus says next, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. 
And the Beatitudes are a progressive reality, a progressive revelation of the kingdom. And once we've opened our eyes and we've seen ourselves the way that God sees us as empty-handed, spiritually impoverished people, our first response has to be regret for the way we've lived our lives. And it's regret not because we failed to keep the rules, it's because we weren't compassionate and loving the way we were taught to be. It's because we begin to understand the wake of destruction we've left behind us in our mad rush to grab hold of everything for ourselves. Jesus promises that the very first experience we have once we enter into the new life is the comforting presence of God and the blessing of forgiveness. The mourning is the result of loss. And when we gain the perspective of the king, when we begin to have the blinders removed that allow us to see ourselves as we truly are, then we're going to understand what we've done. And let's face it, it's not easy. It's not easy to face yourself. It's also not easy to leave an old life behind. And that's really what Jesus tells us to do. We have to divorce the world to enter the kingdom. Once you've done that, we can find ourselves mourning the loss of control that we used to have and of the physical and emotional comforts that we used to enjoy. I mean, everybody misses what lies behind every now and then. But Jesus teaches that even when we experience the grief and loss that comes from embracing His way, well, the Spirit of God is there to comfort us and to give us strength to move ahead instead of falling away and going backwards. See, the Pharisees offered only condemnation for failure. Jesus comes and offers us comfort and support. And for the farmers and the fishermen sitting in the crowd that day, that was exciting and encouraging news. For the hopeless and for the oppressed, there was a promise of joy and freedom. And that was good news, wasn't it? Well, it's still good news. And I believe you can experience that good news in your life. All you have to do is reach out and grab hold of Him. I appreciate you hanging out with me for a few minutes, and I hope you'll come back again as we continue this journey of discovery. Until then, wishing you peace, love, and spiritual understanding. I'm Mark Owens. God bless you.